ladies and gentlemen, it's showtime. Are you ready for some more squash? No? Are you sure? Okay. This is what it's come down to. Hundreds of players have come from all over the world, but only two ever make it to the final. And only one can walk away and say, I'm the current world champion. The two players contesting the boys' final are both from Egypt, and they have entertained us all week with sensational and tantalizing squash. Just a few words before I bring the players on court. After this match, we'll be doing an interview with the winner. I would ask you all to respect the players and to stay in your seats during the interview and then during the prize giving ceremony that will follow immediately after that interview. So after the match, please stay in your seats as we will be going straight into the prize giving and medal ceremony. After that, of course, it's party time. We've got the disco through there. There is free food. There is uh, a little bit of alcohol, I've been told. So uh, we've got lots to look forward to. But, but please, if you can, show your appreciation to the players and stay seated after this match. So without further ado, let's get the players on the courts. Our first player, he's the number two seed. Will you please welcome to the court, Karim El Hamami. <laughs> and his opponent also from Egypt. He's the number one seed. He is Faz Mohamed Dusuki. Your referees for this match, left referee Wayne Smith, right referee Strickland Sihandri, and your central referee Mike Collins. top end of the you know junior game here and senior game they've been dominating here for the last number of years for sure but uh, two juniors far as Suzuki number one seed against Kareem El Hamami number two seed draw totally playing out according to the seeding I mean a few more upsets on the girls side of things um, Suzuki dropping a game to uh, Diego Ilias of Peru in the quarterfinals one is semi-final match, three love. Um, Kareem El Hamani uh, dropped the game in his semi-finals. Um, I believe dropped the game in his quarterfinals as well, but lightning quick around the court. He's got a really quick wrist. He's got a, a bit of an unorthodox grip and can flick that ball and change directions on the ball very quickly. Suzuki, yeah. very strong, uh, physically strong. He sort of reminds me a bit of a Gregory Gauthier. Um, you know, stocky, very strong, muscular guy. Uh, you know, I think big difference with him and Diego Ilias, just that bit stronger, that bit fitter, and able to withstand the, uh, you know, these really tough rallies. Yeah. And again, very, very fast into the front of the court, accelerates very quickly. Expect, expect some fireworks. I mean, I just expect a, 
you know, a real, real high tempo exchange between these two guys. Yeah, and I think unlike the, the ladies' final, which um, was, Shabini was heavily expected to win, you I'm know, uh, but while he put her through the mill en route to that victory, but um, this one isn't the foregone conclusion. They are the two top seeds, and they play each other fairly regularly, and they, they will know each other's game, and I think it's going to be just about the occasion, about, uh, I don't think we have to say who wants it the most, because I think they both want it yeah. dearly. Um, to Certainly follow in a the first time winner coming up here. Exactly, and to follow in the footsteps of the great Rami is, uh, you know, puts you on that path of, uh, of the great. As so many that have won this title go on to win the World Open itself. Can these Egyptian coaching coaches uh, it's almost like a holiday for them. The Egyptians playing Egyptians, and they, you know, don't don't get involved in between games. They just get to sit back and watch it as well with everybody else. Yeah. Um, and I'll certainly see, see some of the Egyptian parents, uh, you know, really trying to motivate their their, their kids. You know, uh, you see the, the kids looking out at them through the glass, and uh, you know, willing them in to win. Yeah. Uh, it's such a huge, huge. Uh, sport in Egypt and the, the, the pride and what's at, at stake for them. I think it's uh, it's exciting to see. Well, that's the warm-up done. Tracksuit bottoms will be coming off. And then fate will play out. Well, I'm going to ask you to make a prediction. I know it's cruel. I'm going to go with Dazuki here. Um, I, this could go five, and you know, points in the fifth. I mean, who knows? It's, it could just be a pure, pure battle out there. Um, I just think he's going to be too strong for him. I think he's going to be able to keep the tempo up fast enough, and he's skilled enough into the front of the court yeah. uh, just to work in front to back. Um, you know. A bit of uh, Hamami's game, maybe not, you, you know, it's a bit of a, a flash of flair here and there, and, right. you know, if he's not right on with some of his shots, yeah. um, you, you, you know, he's going to leave the ball open a little bit, so. Sure. What do you think, 3 no, 3 one I'm going to say 3-1. Okay, well then, to make things interesting, I'm going to say 3-2 Hamami. All right. So there are the players. The Egyptian flag all over the place. And the atmosphere in here is absolutely electric. I think people know what's about to happen here. It could be pretty special. It's the pinnacle of junior squash. putting his hand up and apologizing to Dasuki for the yes, aggressive push. One love. I really like to see uh, the way Dasuki hits the ball. I mean, he hits it so cleanly. And uh, it's great nick there. 
I wonder how many of those. There should be a nick counter <laughs> up on the scoreboard, I'll you know? I'll start counting them. That's down. Because he just snaps his forearm through that ball, Dazuki. Generates a lot of pace when the ball's up above his shoulders and again just snaps it down. Pretty much all the players too Here's using a, a teardrop frame. You know, they don't uh, see the traditional um, you know, close throat. Yeah. You know, they're all they're all choosing to use this teardrop, maybe giving you a bigger a little bit bigger sweet spot. Um, There's that little snap. Amami picks up the ball, though. It just seems effortless. This could be a regular Tuesday morning club match, you know, <laughs> in Egypt. Well, just a couple of hours ago, I saw Good length. Fares. Good Eyeing up the trophy and having a good look at it. Probably imagining what it will look like with his name. Again, just, oh, it. just created some space there, Ferris. Just missed that length and Kamami boxed him out a bit. Laid that kill down into the space. Snapping that ball so tight down the wall. Two, three. Is it broken? Yeah. If it's broken, you can change it, yes. So, Amami, broken racket. I think it might just be the bumper strip on the top, but. Uh, be careful with these WSF. Referees, they're, they're, they're pretty hot on the rules. Yeah. I remember once trying to get a breather, claiming that I had a broken racket, and they checked it. <laughs> I'll try that again. <laughs> I, I like the uh, the tournament setup here. They've got the the referees have their own little, it's almost a den like yeah. that here beside the tournament desk, and Absolutely. they they keep them in there. They're like <laughs> like tigers. They keep them in this little den, <laughs> all packed in, and they come out when they come to referee their matches. Two, three. Good choice there, yeah. electing to play that ball. I mean, a lot of times you see the players, you know, trying to manufacture a stroke there when that ball points out, pops out in the middle of the court. But he, you know, the court's wide open. He just has to push a little drop in. And there's yeah. no way Hamami's going to uh, recover. No, sure. And he'll have respected that Hamami's made absolute maximum effort to clear the ball as well. And that's yeah. the sort of squash we, we love to see. So like out Ferris, he, you know, he walks around to positions on the court. Yep. And he's, he's really, uh, you know, calculating his, his positioning and, and uh, cutting the court off with his body. Great kill there by Hamami. There's another one. And Hamami's style is more of a sort of bouncy style. He bounces in, he bounces out. It's, uh, it's a, it's a, it'd be interesting for young players to watch this and see that there are different ways of moving, and obviously the most economical is normally the best, but getting that bounce into the corner allows you to bounce straight back out so fast. Yeah. Back to the tee. Maybe a bit more of a counter counter punch or counter attacker, and you know, just keeps retrieving, keeps retrieving, and then suddenly flips the rally when the moment's there. 
great length by Fars. And up. For all. They're shaping up for the drop and then pumping it cross court. Well, he's just again, he's so strong. He can just kind of, he, he slows his approach to the ball, the action to the contact there, and just snaps his forearm at the last second. And he, you know, gets the ball down the wall as, uh, as good as anybody who's taking a full swing. And he walks back to the tee or takes up a position for a volley. Seems totally comfortable. Trying to get into his rhythm. Good length there from Tanami. Just over hit there. Good pick up. Oh, there's a neck in the back. And up. Great rally. You know, there's, there's where you can really enjoy the squash and you can see one player taking advantage and then the other player just gradually absorbing it and then pushing back the other way. Five to four. Well, midway through the first game and both players looking really comfortable out there. Settled down, having some nice targets. Just not quite deep enough with that length. It's a little touch drop. He picks up so much. Yeah. Nice. And a lot. That was tight. No, it? Well, no. It's too tight. It was right. tight on the wall. It was a bit high, but it was uh, certainly tight on the wall. Six four. With ten points played, it's uh, it's definitely a match that you wouldn't want to call. They're both really. Good squash for Ami getting the better of it. Just by yeah. a little. Far as in that position in the midcourt, just looking for those volleys. I think he's going to really have to, you know, work that ball in short there. Their no, ball is a little too tight for him. Um, you know, just working him in short and then getting another volley and punching him into the back. Drop shot there in the front. It's a difference here with these top players, the top Five, top seven. eight, top four for sure. I mean, when they get that ball loose in the front third of the court, I mean, they just have the ability to uh, to put the ball in the neck, you know, and it's just make yeah. the other person dig something out. And I mean, it's uh, there's not really much thought involved, and you just concentrate on your target, and, and they're consistently able to put the ball in there. Yeah. See again there, just missed it. That's Good a great boast. Hamimi again, just tucking to it into the corner. Absolutely everything so far. I'm sure Farrell's will be hoping that doesn't continue for the whole match. Good volley exchange there. You know, it's like they're trading, trading blows, trading punches. Hold and a punch to the back. Oh, 
Oh, oh there beautiful. it is. There's that little cross foot flick. He just carves the outside of the ball and uh, gets around and puts it into the nick. And it, you know that one wasn't sharp, but it was just so delicately stroked in there. Nine five. Mommy's been playing very consistent here. I don't know what he's calling. The ball looked good to me. Not sure. Did he think the ball had hit the top of the tin, maybe? Or? Let's see if we can get a replay of that one. Left side. So, there's a little lovely desert shot ball. there. Well, I think he maybe heard a noise and thought it hit the tin, but it was well above the tin. But he's got such a well-established lead in this, it's uh, upset him too much. Again, he just, look how quickly he just picks it up, he's back on the tee. Good defensive play there. Oh, no, unforced error. That's, uh, that's, that, the first. that's been uncharacteristic there. He, yeah. He's been very consistent the first game and just maybe tried to tuck one in a little too tight. Yep. Suki, two unforced errors in this game, but that's the very first mistake that Amini's made in this match. Well, cross court flick. Down. That's down. Seven There's two in a row. Nine. Maybe just a little off balance. I think he was going to the forehand side, but it's a little bit of deception from Dasuki and flicked it the other way. Great rally from Dazuki there. He's just, you know, he's just so patient and he just keeps chipping it in, chipping it in. Hamami's digging and digging and digging and uh, waits his time. He's patient, patient. I mean, it's the difference with the Egyptians, I think, classical game of people being patient, hitting length to the back. They're, they're patient hitting drops to the front, yeah. you know? <laughs> just patient going for kill after kill after kill after kill. And he's done that a couple times. He seemed he likes his position there, and that the ball's just maybe a bit too tight, and he needs to let it go down the wall and hit a defensive shot and get back there again. So it brings up a couple of game balls for Hamimi. And as we've already seen this evening, game balls don't count for much unless you convert them. And that pickup from Dasuki was absolutely. Well, it's good to see Dazuki going through and playing the ball there. Yeah. You know, there's been very few decisions here in this game. Oh, I don't know about that one. Yes, that ball Tonight. seemed to be in front. He seemed Tonight. to be able to uh, maybe go forward and play that one, but Hamami perhaps mishit it slightly, so it, it didn't, you know, really come back to where uh, Dazuki originally thought it was. I don't know if the referees really uh, might be one of those that he would use the replay on. Yeah. I think uh, that would look different from, uh, from the top shot, maybe. Yes, let's. 10 8, game four. Yes, let's. Just popped it out there. Now, Hamami's so quick. I mean, he 
miss hits the ball and knows it's coming on the middle and he's quick enough just to get away from the, the swing of Faris there. Yeah. And Faris will know that and he knows that if he doesn't play it and the mummy's cleared then he's going to get a no let. So, uh, oh, there's, there a there's, there's a neck. What a there's his third, third nick. It was a game of yeah. nicks and unforced yeah. errors that made the difference in the end. So... Mami pretty impressive in that first game. Definitely. He, uh, just, he's, he's a pesky little guy, I think. You know, he's just he's so quick. Yep. Um, you know, certainly puts pressure on, on the attacker, knowing that you've got to make, you know, one attack, two attacks, three attacks, and he's still digging them out and sometimes firing right back at you. So, um, yep. I don't know if Fars maybe just needs to just accelerate just slightly and just, you know, keep the tempo up as fast as he can. And, uh, you know, hopefully he can get a few more mistakes out of Hamali. Yeah, well, you, you're saying it dead right. I mean, Dasuki is he's going to have to be patient because Hamimi is getting to absolutely everything. Yeah. It's going to take maybe 20 shots to get him out of position. Um, uh, you know, Dasuki going to have to just hope he tires the longer the match goes on because uh, the moment what would look like clear winners against anybody else are just, just being... Them out. And, and, you know, using a bit of deception, trying to hold the ball a little bit, just so you can get him to, to stop and then start. Yeah. Um, you know, and he, he's floating around the court. And, you know, if you're just slightly moving, you can change direction very quickly. Um, but if you stop and have to accelerate, that's much, much more difficult. Seconds. And certainly over the course of a match, it's going to be more tiring for him. So... Um, if he can force the loose ball and, you know, maybe add a bit of deception in, too, I mean, he can uh, really open the court up. Time. Oh, players, look at this, they got three rackets on the court again. It's better to have okay. more than you need. And mummy leads one game to love. Just missed the nick there. Three attacks there, all defended well. length just a lap maybe yeah Suzuki there saying hey, uh, there was no interference he should have played that shot these guys are certainly tense you know they're 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 in a battle here they probably know each other's game so well and they just uh yeah I can see this just getting more and more tense as every point is ticked off at the moment no real panic at one yes, love down one suki right up his back not really pushing through though i mean he, uh, we've seen a lot more uh contact in some of the other matches so it's again they're 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 not uh looking for anything that ball's very tight yes, yeah one love and i think there is a line you know that you have you have to show and make the effort to play the ball, but it's you have to be respectful of your, 
your opponent and not cause them injury in the process of doing it. And that can be difficult at times when you're Got a stroke there. really accelerating around the court. And up, one more. That's a great dive from Kamali. Just right back up again. Yep. And look, look Dazuki may be a little bit, uh, you know, how frustrating is he? You, you guys diving to get the balls and then he's yep. maybe a bit too ambitious trying to put another nick in there from a high position. And the reward for that dive is, uh, is a point and added frustration. Absolutely. Dazuki, it's... Uh, you know, by the time Dasuki's got to this ball, he's on the tee. <laughs> okay, he dived quite near to it, but... Uh, so that kill. Well, that's just a little frustration. If it had gone the crowd, it would have roared, as it is. Yes, yep, I mean, he is out of there yeah. like a rocket, isn't he? He plays, plays a bad shot, hits the corner, but he, he clears so, so quickly. And another unforced error. I don't know if Dazuki maybe would want to just slow it down a little bit. Um, you know, try and get Hamami, uh, you know, again, to stop. Try and almost put him to sleep a little bit and then and then pick up the pace. It seems that uh, at this high tempo, again, Hamami's just uh, on the ball, on the ball, and he, and he wants to be at this pace. Yeah. No, it's, what you're saying is very true. Sometimes changing the pace can really upset the player just that's that rhythm, enjoying. Just yeah. that rhythm, you know. It's a great it's neck there. there. Yeah. I think that's the second Two, three. Dasuki Nick. I'm counting them like you asked me to. Yeah. <laughs> Great get out of the back corner. Great working boast. The use of the lob there gives him plenty of time to take his place back in the center of the court. Again, just a there. little too quick, I think, putting the, that kill in. He's just not necessarily set. Um. With three unforced errors in this game. Um, I think for Dazuki. Yeah. Referee's thinking minimal contact there. Yeah, get him in there, picking that ball up. Hamami's certainly thinking, I can get that, I can get that. Wonder what sort of uh, reward for world junior champion in Egypt. I mean, uh, maybe some endorsements and uh, you know, certainly some uh, some fame. Yeah, one would hope. I, I mean, you know, you think about football or you know, basketball. These, you know, the the kids who come out number one in the in the drafts and they're making multi million dollar contracts. Yeah. Um, you know, these are these are the best best in the world right now.
course, that title on your CV, the stock price would go up. Absolutely, it's great length there. Get into the Olympics in 2020. It's really like, you know, again, when Fares makes contact with the ball and he's hitting through it, you can just see his body, his whole body is turning through it and moving back to the tee in, in really perfect timing. And it's... Uh, no hit. Bit unlucky there, maybe, but... You chose to go for the person, maybe. You chose to go for the man and not the ball. No hit. Oh, I appreciate no hit. Oh, I think that's a let there. We'll let the referees have that one. They've not made too many howling decisions this week. It's, uh, it's a lot of decisions that they've had to make over hundreds of matches. Oh, he's Another diving dive. again. That's just, and he's there. He's got it again. The only place on this court. I think is going to have to put the ball back in its box before Hamami goes up on it. Just it's just unbelievable. It's trying to clear the ball. Stroke to yeah, it's got to be a stroke. It's yeah. a great rally goal. Come on, just picking everything up. Yeah. Dive, top. full stretch into the front right. Yeah. Feeling the pickups, please? Pickups are all good. <laughs> Six five. I'm questioning yeah. the pickup. Yeah. I got mine. I don't know about his. <laughs> That's got to be frustrating. He worked so hard in that rally. And look, look at the it's speed. This is incredible. Court sprinting. Just digging that out. And not only did he dig it out, he's done, he's played a great lob with it. It's really given him just a bit more time to regain his position. But yeah. even though he's lost that point, the, the damage it will do to Dasuki in the respect of the retrieving is is uh, is going to pay dividends. I'm quite sure because the unforced errors are only coming because of the frustration of not being able to put it anywhere that Hamari is not getting to it. Yeah, and I think Dasuki. There's a oh, squeeze again. Yeah. Maybe not a good choice there to go short when it's so tight. I mean, he's made a few mistakes there on the backhand wall. Uh, first game as well, just maybe trying to attack when the ball's a little bit too tight. Yeah. Um, but he hasn't really, you know, he haven't seen too much frustration in terms of his emotion yet, so he's hanging in there. Yeah. That's down. There we go. Couple of mistakes, there that's, you go. That's Seven the six. sort of error that I think is being caused purely because he knows it's going to have to be a little tighter. Perfect, yeah. Well, if your opponent's retrieving everything, what do you do? Well, and again, I think uh, at the same time, uh, Hamami's not particularly forcing the play too much on Dazuki. I mean, it's it's coming more in, in the air count, yeah. and and you know, just hitting one or two more rallying shots when it's when it's not quite there for him. You know, being a little more patient with it. But the tempo is just so high; They're just blitzing the ball into the front of the court. Great shot there. I don't think they're going to let that. Out. So, seeing that Hamami there, the difference is just patient, patient, patient. Opening puts it away. 8-6. Eight, 8-6. Six. Eight, six. Hamami. You get the feeling that this might be the moment here in the match if Dazuki gets eight, down six. two games. It's got to, it's got to find a way to get back in this, get the lead. Yes, Nate. It's a good call. 8-6. Skids across court. Suki's done well to oh, get court. his racket on that, but then Nine, again, six. just the constant pressure for Maui. 9-6 now in the second game, leads one game to love. That's a great drop. 
Suzuki's going in there. There's that volley, just not quite getting it down the wall. I don't know if he'll get a lift there. No lift. No. Yeah, he called that very quickly. 10 6, game ball. So Hamami earns himself four game balls to take a 2 0 lead. Suki's going for nips now because, frankly, it's about the only way he's going to break Hamami down. Yes, Lynch. 10 6, game ball. From the right. Great well, counter into the yeah. front right there. He just flicks that ball cross court. Very dangerous when somebody's attacking from the very back of the court and they, they put it in short. If you can get on that ball and counter drop it and then force that player to cover their own shot up to the front. Yeah. And, uh, and these Egyptians so good at, at, at that cross court nick. Once there's a bit of opening and they can just squeeze it across there and roll it out. I mean, it's, it's such a tough movement right up to the front corner to dig that ball out. The crowd really soaking this up. You can see many of the Egyptians there right down at the front and, uh, there was a rumor going about that when the Egyptians came here they brought empty suitcases to take all the silverware back in and uh, it's certainly going to have a few trophies in the trophy cabinet yeah I think though if, uh, if I was winning a world title I'd leave it out of the suitcase and I'd put it on a seat all uh, all on its own next to me maybe first class yeah when people come up and say, hey, what's that? You go, well, I'm a world champion. It's got to be a great feeling to be the best in the world. Well, here's Dazuki. He's, he's sitting here right in front of his, his dream, I'm sure, world junior champion. He's got to find a way here to win three games. Can just erase what's happened. He's got to get into his zone. Maybe a bit more patience. I mean, uh, maybe he's trying just a little bit too hard. You know, maybe a little less is more. And as we move into the third game, these guys have already been on court 32 minutes. And um, Time. that's really Thank high you, quality squash. Come, I don't know. Uh, if you're gonna make him change a shirt here. I mean, there were some issues uh, the live stream. You got them. Dazuki's got a blue shirt on now as well. Yeah. The referees might. Well, in theory, as the higher seed, he's entitled to wear whatever color he wants. Yeah. So well. are they Excuse gonna me, ask Mr. Hamami to Dezuki? come Dezuki? off? Mr. Dazuki. Yeah. Mr. Dazuki. I think they're gonna ask him to change Mr. his shirt. Dezuki, you've changed your shirt to blue. It's big screen. Can you? You've got to stay in white. It's big screen, so you've got to keep the same shirt. <laughs> uh, maybe, uh, good, good spot there, my friend. <laughs> Going to send somebody to go find a, <laughs> find a, white a shirt. shirt. Yep. There you go. It's not often you yeah, see. It's not going to be very comfortable throwing another sweaty shirt back on. No, you know? that's nasty. He's, uh, well, if just it looking in my bag, I don't have a shirt here for him. No. I don't know if he wants to represent Canada in this last game. <laughs> We'd take them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll bet. Who wouldn't? So, as you say, he's changed the shirt because it'd be a bit more comfortable, but there it is. Now, the mummy leads two games to the Great hold there. Nice great hold and just flips down the wall straight. And he looks absolutely. You can see the conviction. He's 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 ready to go. Tight. I mean, he's squeezed a few few errors here. Again, he's 
That drop was probably a foot high, but just glued to the sidewall. Just fishing and just kind of dragging his racket a little later there, just trying to squeeze a stroke out. Referees weren't buying it. It's kind of there. Well, I'm only two up, but I'm sure this third one will be the hardest game he's ever had to win. See it time and time again. again. A squeeze oh, on that back wet. end. You know, I'm sure, we, you know, as squash players, you know, just those days where your timing is just that little bit better, you know, and it's just milliseconds. And, you know, Hamami just seems to be right on time today. And then his length has been very tight, and he's been squeezing balls out of uh, Bazuki. Another dive. Not quite, quite good there. that one, but and he's up. throwing himself absolutely everything. And well Watch mighty at 2 0. You might think Hamami wants Watch to win, eh? Yeah. Want to put this? Thank you. Look at that. Throwing himself in there. Thank you. Amazing oh, counter cool. drop forces. And up three, two. Suki just holding his knee there. He really had to charge in there and pick that ball up. I think his, his backhand drop there just, you know, it's hitting the side wall a bit, popping out. He needs to get that ball to bounce. Pushes him out of the way. Pace. Punishingly fast. You were saying the last game, when a change of pace would have benefit. That's good length there. Gasuki the to do that, but he seems to be persisting with the all out Three Egyptian all. power. You notice though that the winners that Dazuki's getting tend to be Hamami in the back of the court. Mm -hmm. Just like that last rally. Just you know, it gets him working, but it's that penetrating length at the end of the rally that he's just, you know, getting him at the back of the court. Hamami's really not giving anything away at the front. I mean, he's really lobbing well and he's just counter punching well and he's just getting everything back up there. No. no. Or down. Again, Suki needs to remember that this court, you know, the ball does die in these back corners, so against a player that is literally retrieving the unretrievable. As you say, looking for those back targets could be the answer to the puzzle that's been put before him. One, you know, I see with Hamami, just, you know, the timing. And that's you know, too almost good. picked that one up. I mean, he, he's been getting some really nice tight balls on the sidewall. I mean, maybe today, Dazuki just can't quite find that. You know, it's a matter of a millisecond or just an inch of length that's just bouncing up here and there. Maybe another day he'd be a little bit tighter. Yeah, and Hamami con continually persisting with the dive for balls that... Thank you. Suki would be thinking was a clear winner, but I mean, he's Five, keeping three. that pressure on because it means that Suki's going to maybe be forced to pop a few of those in the tin just because he knows they're not absolutely perfect. His opponent will be on it. Mm. Stroke to Mr. Alamami. Tough call. I'd like to see how good that, that counter drop of Dazuki was there. I mean, he was certainly clearing. I don't know, again, 
Hamami just maybe dragging his racket a little longer and just really selling that stroke. Down. Not up, down. And there it is. Five all. And that's the sort of error that comes from someone that's trying to play so close to the tin. You got a bit of blood here, or? Yes. Well, he's asked for three minutes. If it was a blood injury, he's got as long as he wants, but maybe it's um, an injury. I'm certainly surprised he's not bleeding more. He's been flying all over the place, just totally putting his body out there. This would be uh, one of those television timeout times. <laughs> Let's go to a commercial break. Yeah, uh, bring the cheerleaders in. Ah, well, we had those at the opening ceremony. We don't have any here today. to nine here in Poland. Match time now running about 40 minutes. Not surprising it's, uh, you know, again, when you've got two players that maybe play each other quite a bit, you know, you've got that sort of nemesis at your club. If it's, even when you get up too love on them, you know, just mentally, you know, the, it, it's almost like it's, it's inevitable it's going five. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, you know, to, to get out there and we'll, we'll see here, it's five all here in the second. I mean, can Hamami, Hamami uh, you know, finish him off at three. And, uh, you know, if not, I mean, it surely we'll probably see five games. I don't know. You know, we see Dasuki, who was prowling around the court like a tiger, has gone back to his seat now. It's absolutely essential he stays in the zone. And, um, Central referee Mike Collins is down in Hamami's corner. Just keeping a close eye on what's actually going on. So. Well, we had a, a similar incident in the third place playoff with, uh, with uh, Richie Fallows coming through and winning that in the end. His opponent picking up a, an injury that had a quite a lengthy timeout. Dulao. Oh, Tamimi. Yeah, he uh, yeah. almost came out with a full sock on his arm. I think he yeah. might have scratched up his elbow and his hand on that. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't be surprised if Mami comes back with the full speed skating elbow pads and knee pads on. That's, yeah. uh, it's again for me part of the, you know, the blood rule here. I mean, this delay we have in the match, I mean, it, it's such a minor scrape at this point. Perhaps, you know, maybe give them three three minutes in between the game or something. And, yeah. and uh, you know, if it's, if it's pouring blood out, I mean, you can uh, stop the rally and, uh, you know, stop the bleeding. But, I mean, if, it, if you've got a scrape and it's, you know, it, it's certainly not uh, anything life-threatening. Um, and, and, you know, again, if uh, you're under a bit of pressure and, uh, you know, it just it, it changes the tempo of the match, I'd rather see them just battle it out. Yeah, I think I agree. Uh, I think uh, most of the rules we have in the game are pretty solid now. You know, games evolve and rules change. Um, but, yeah, that's an interesting one that... Um, talking with Wendy Dancy, the, uh, the lady in charge of our, our referees here, and uh, asking her some questions, which uh, we'll be posting an interview with her later in the week. But one of the questions was, uh, are there any rules in the game that you change? Where well, I thought it was an interesting thing to ask a referee. And initially she said no, but uh, uh, she did say that something like Hawkeye for the outline and the, uh, the tin might be a useful addition to their armory. 
Absolutely. I mean, you're seeing it on all, all, all the sports now with the, uh, I mean, even uh, FIFA, I believe they've got the goal line technology. And I mean, you know, sometimes the referee just can't see the ball yes. in the front of the court. I mean, it, it clips the tin and the, the player's body just blocks it. There you um, go. You can see the left knee of Hamami well and truly strapped up. Yeah. Wonder if that will play into his mind at all. Again, gives him a little bit more of an e-pad here. Maybe he'll be throwing his body out a little more. You can see he's just trying to move around a bit and see how it feels. Yep. So we'll have a little, little bit of ball warming and then back into it. The number one seed is on the ropes a little. A two nil down. I still feel that there's every chance he could come back in this match. But the next few points are going to be vital. Great drop there. Well, that's about the first counter drop that I know he hasn't done something useful with. Maybe some renewed determination here for Bazuki. Yeah. Squeezes another ball. Seven, so first two points after that longish break. Yeah, I think, he, you know, again, I think he just needs to win some more points like that. He needs to be able to just play a bit more patient and, and draw the rallies out a bit and, and squeeze a few errors out of Hamami and not worry so much about having to go short and risk Eight three quick points for uh, Dezuki. I think that was an OLED. Uh, yeah. yeah. Good cross court flip there. No lips. There's another no lips. There it, it, was. Was. it was a great. Suzuki is so solid. You can see uh, Hamami literally pushing all his mind. I don't even think you can move him there. So strong coming out of the ball. Stroke, yeah. Stroke to Mr. Hamami. And out 6-9. Interesting. See how he kind of hit that one into the uh, into the sidewall and just give him a bit of an odd look at it. There's that hold and drive. Patient here. Wow. Not just got it. He's just a beautiful counter drop. So there's Hamami. Just kind of hangs oh. in there, and the winner to the back of the court. It's a great rally for Mizuki there. That's going to give him some confidence. So four game balls. See again though, Hamami in the front. Like he can just get to the ball. He keeps it down. Counter punches so well and. That thunder drive to the back, just you can't dig it back. There we go. I think Kamala conceding the game there at the end. So did a lot of work. Turns out that injury break really didn't do any favors to Hamami. Should I say blood, blood break? Yeah. Again, he was—he's throwing his body around, picking everything up, eh? And it just has to uh, pause to cover a blood injury. But uh, Dazuki was certainly focused there. I mean, he played—that was probably the best five points he's put together in the match thus yeah. far. And that's going to—that's going to feel good, just getting that game on the board, to settle. Any nerves that he certainly would have been feeling at 2-2 and 5-5, you're, you're only six points away from your dream disappearing completely. Yeah, and 
Hamami's got to be thinking now, I, you know, here's Tazuki coming back. I mean, is he going to regroup now? And, and uh, you know, he's certainly been playing very well down the backhand wall and keeping it tight. And, uh, you know, relying on his retrieving for sure. He might want to think as well when uh, he's getting, you know, strung around the court, maybe a few back wall bolts just to get out of a, you, you know, just to retrieve that extra ball again, rather than trying to twist it back to the front wall. Yeah. Um, you know, his momentum's going towards the back glass and the uh, buys himself some time to get back into position and make the Zuki hit another shot. Sure. I and mean, that's really the key for him. Like my prediction isn't uh, isn't in the cards, but you still uh, Amami in five. Yeah. Oh. You kind of got to get the feeling again. This could be one of these thrillers that gets right down to the last couple of points. Oh. This certainly uh, feel this week has been leading up to. Something like this. Mami, incredibly That's quick hands. Great volley, but he just needs to just block it down the wall there and not try to then over hit it a bit. Left side, yeah. please. Comes and so the, fast. And the shot by Dasuki down the middle against many other players wouldn't have been a stroke because the player wouldn't have recovered to the tee that quickly but Hamami is just so lightning fast recovering even when he's thrown himself on the floor he's back on the central central area of the court great working balls there as if to say is that the best you can do and that's a racket in the face that's sort of the reason that I wear is you took it in the Required. nose there. Yeah. You bleeding? I can't see from here, but he looks to be in some pain. His opponent. Suzuki, do you require some injury time? It's maybe, I can't see any blood. I think it's maybe just stinging. If it's in the nose, that's going to hurt. Oh, I don't think that was a racket. I think he took a, a forearm there. Ah, OK. Cool. Maybe, what do you think? Broken nose? Oh, well, let's see what happens when that guy squeezes his nose. Oh no, see some of that smelling gonna, salts in here. We're not gonna get to see that. Oh. Well, the referee is spending as much time down on the court as he is in his seat. Asking Hamami what he thinks happened. So, central referee Mike Collins explaining what his options are. If the injury was caused by his opponent, follow through from Hamami and yeah. then the elbow straight in the left hand side of Tasuki's head. Maybe caught his nose as well with the elbow. And certainly. The knockout blow here. Yeah, and certainly the, the from the sound that Dasuki made when that happened, it was definitely his nose that was caught. It had just been on the temple, probably not so much pain, but uh, it seems to be okay. <laughs> Doesn't appear to be any blood. And Mammy going up and apologizing. There's no malice meant, it's just one of those clashes that sometimes happens. But how will that affect Dasuki moving on 
It is two fourth gate. Net. And it's two love from the left, Eldon Ami Servi. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I don't think Amami should push it. Is it really? Is it a lot? <laughs> 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 he's holding his head a little bit here. I don't know if he's. Uh Mr. Alamami, it was a contributed injury, so Mr. Suzuki has reasonable time to recover. So I'm just uh, let's give him every chance. A referee explaining that because the injury was caused by his opponent, exact wording is he has to be given a reasonable time to recover. Not sure what that means, but I guess that is at the discretion of the. Referee in charge. Well, Suki looks keen to to get playing, but two, two nil down in this fourth set. Nice squeeze there. Again, just that length of the back of the court is a little high. Down. And that's unforced error. And up. One, it's a tricky here. Sometimes your opponent takes an injury and you, you know, that creeps into your mind. You know, you start thinking about your opponent a bit. Maybe having a bit of mercy on them. <laughs> I'm sure that won't last very long. Yes, Lynch. That's a good call. One, two. Well, I can tell you for a fact that the Egyptians are some of the friendliest people you'd ever want to meet off the court, but I'm not sure about how friendly they are on the court. These guys go on there and they do battle for real. Again, that ball to the back, just, just sitting up and up. Suzuki could be a little bit more precise with his length uh, when he's in that attacking position, the same way as he's trying to put it in the neck at the front. There, that was much better. This is a great rally. There it is. Again, just a little bit of a hold, keeping Hermione guessing, and then finally, yeah, it's right a choice wall. down the wall. Often is the right choice down the wall. Yeah, and just measuring again, that getting the ball to bounce twice. You know, it's not bouncing and rebounding off the back wall. Yes. I think that is the object of the game, is it? Get the ball to bounce twice. I think so. Three times just to be sure. Well, the holy grail for all squash players, the rolling nick. here they're all again you see it again they're just sort of pushing through playing the ball you know sometimes players will just stop ask for laps and the, the rhythm of the match really yes Mitch. rhythm Ooh. really breaks the play i mean i think the, the people are enjoying uh the fact that they're seeing good squash here and, and uh for sure and both of these players will be aware of the the history of the yes. the title they're playing for and that they want to look back when they watch this match and go, win or lose. I was really proud to be part yeah. of a, an epic battle. It's got to be a lot. Yes, Lynch. It's pretty clear sure. there by the time the ball. Maybe even a no let. You know, just should have played that one. Yeah. Well, quick bounce. There's the court there. Just a little bounce. Look, 
jumps high into the air to volley that. Can't let it go over his head. early here in the fourth game. Yep. And at this level, the unforced errors, you can maybe afford one or two in a game, but that really is your lot. You can't give points to your opponent. When I say unforced errors, they're sort of being forced by Hilami because of his retrieving. Suki's on to really zone in target no lit. Wow. yeah see I think the difference there uh, Dizuki was pushing through and playing that ball a little bit earlier and uh, you know there he just stopped maybe a little less effort maybe he's getting a bit tired now well been on court just a little over an hour now or maybe just a little under an hour if you take off the uh, little blow injury rate. yeah Still with that shot to the head there too. Great shot. And up. This pump from the Suki. Three four. I'll watch for that. I'll watch that for is that. As good as Three, a shot four. gets. And that that bounced three times and then just rolled. <laughs> Another yeah. good attack there. Yeah. That was not up. And this is the quality that oh. Hamami is forcing Dasuki to play. Anything less than that just isn't going to be good enough. Good shot. For that neck again. Yep. Yes, Lynch. Five four. That would be interesting to see players refereeing themselves. <laughs> you know. <laughs> well, I think this is why in the professional game the video review is such a a vital tool because when players are so sure about uh, the, uh, the decision that they now get to see it on the screen and uh, I think that just levels out the mistakes a little. I, uh, if they get it wrong, they lose it. If they get it right, they get to keep it and use it again. I joke with some of my members that uh, 
Mayfair in Toronto. Um, you know, if you had video review on your club court and you could go out and just put a put a coin into the machine and get the get the playback. I mean, how many members come and ask me? Okay, so this is what happened. You know, was it a let? Was it a stroke? I mean, it would be. Uh, maybe guys would pay pay dollars for that. Well, for anyone listening, that's a bit of a software and technical whiz. Maybe that's the next uh, next money maker. Yes, mate. Five four. Yeah, you got to think Hamami's going to get a lot of these calls. I mean, he's picked up so much. Unless that ball is just, you know, glued into the wall, it's it's got to be a lap. Yep. Yeah, so as I was saying about, you know, showing the referee early on in the match, look, I can get everything. That's so he's slipped a little right. Another fist pump from Dasuki. 6-4. As if to say, this isn't over. Until I say it's over. Yes, let six four. Yeah, the drop was good, but not good enough for the referees to award no let there. That there is, is the sort of shot that doesn't come back. And up five six. And as you say, the key to that—they take the ball so far in front of them see the ball so quickly it's uh it's gotta be a lot yes Lynch, five six it's interesting too where as far as you know if we we had a percentage breakdown here i mean hamami seems to be a little bit more you know when he does attack he he's lethal yep and as far as is you know more consistent uh, like you know attack after attack but you know just missing a little bit See the players going through there. There's a good drop. Yes, Lynch. Five, six. <laughs> so quick and back into position, eh? Like, yeah. I mean, he got that ball to midcourt. Well, they started at a million miles an hour and it hasn't really slowed down. strokes from the ref, you know, I mean, these guys have really had to earn their points. Yeah. A tight attack, so. Not much you can say to the players in terms of uh, interference. I mean, I think they're they're playing through when they need to play through, sure. and they're and again when the balls are that good, you uh, you, know, you have to just accept that uh, interference is part of the game. It's just whether it's intended or minimal. Quickly in on that. Oh, just about out there. Oh, oh and it's caught him down the middle. There we go. So, Suzuki might be thinking, well, actually, let's forget the four corner targets. Let's just pump it down the middle. That might be the only way I can get some joy out of this guy. Stroke. stroke to the yeah. So, yeah, Hamami's getting a bit frustrated now. I think he's. Uh, 
Oh, you know, Tazuki's been good. He's been off the 10. Yep. It's a little bit of clear water in the score now, 8 5. Getting his elbows up there. Eight five. Well, returning the favour from a little while ago. You can see that elbow up there, yeah. right in the face. There we go. Same side. I've got one each now. Uh, I don't drink. think he really hit him, but he certainly had it up. Yep. He certainly could have followed through there if he wanted to. Suki is a big, big guy. You wouldn't want to run into him. That's for sure. be slightly in awe of uh, the work that Dasuki's had to do to get back into this match. Absolutely. You know, 2 0, 5 5, and now just, I say, a little while later, maybe half an hour later. Great and kill there, and great pickup. And and there finish. it is. That was a great shot. There's the draw. Oh, he loves that one. Yeah, no, to be Hamani's honest, it was the only place on the court Hamami wouldn't have got to. He was up and he was ready. But he did play. That was a perfect, perfect drop shot to win it. Like, yep. look at that little kill with a low follow through and then just touches it into the neck there. Again, right in the thir front third of the court, the good players should be able to just tuck that ball right into the neck and actually kill it. Yep. Um, versus you. a little further back where you're working it and in there. Ten, six. Game so, ball. four game balls to level the match. Uh, Hamani doesn't There's want Hamani's a rally. Hey, I can do that He's too. a bit fed up with the and rallies. So. Let's see if we see another one here. He's doing a scoreboard, I think, has got a little bit previous. It's not too old just yet. It's still 10 7 to Dasuki. He's gone for the kill there. Just about missed it. Mami doesn't agree with the script that the Suki's written. It's going to be a lot. No lids. Oh, it's a no lead. From the referees, they feel the drop from Mami was too good for the Suki to get in. Game ball. Two game balls saved. And you can see Dazuki, he's got the energy there. He doesn't run through him, he just jumps up. That ball's yep. fairly high. I mean, I think it's he's going to pick that up. It's tied on the sidewall. Maybe that's what the referees were using for their decision. Nevertheless, still two game balls to Dazuki. 8 10. Yes, Lit. It's a good call. 8 10. They were both probably uh, wondering there for a moment. You can just hear the audience around this arena. The edge of their seat in this match. Oh. That's in the tin. Three Nine, game ten. balls saved. One game ball left. Game That's ball. where the nerves are going to come in. Suzuki's got to keep his cool and, you know, work him to the front, hit the winner in the back. It's a nice kill from Hanami. And there it is. He's trying to fire himself up here. Saves four game balls against the number one seed. Takes the score to 10-all. 10-all. Player to win by two points. It's a 10-all. 10-all. Just 
squeezed into that neck, that backhand kill. I'm looking at this. And he's just oh. hit the tin. It's a fist pump from Dasuki. He knows that this is a gift of game another ball. game ball. I think it's a left off there. Yep. Well, could be a big blow there. He's got to stay focused here. Eleven all. Two points from the match. See that Mizuki neck. There's match ball. And now, championship ball to Hamami of Egypt. He saved five game balls against the number one seed, and now he's earned himself a chance of becoming the world champion. Big point. Suzuki's a little shattered here, I think. Let's see if we can respond. Let's see some of the, the crowd just like biting their fingernails right now. And there it is. There it is. He takes the title from the number one seed. Karim Al Hamami is the champion. Ladies and gentlemen, please show your appreciation for both the players. Karim Dasuki and Karim Al Hamami. Ladies and gentlemen, please stay in your seats. Please don't leave the arena, ladies and gentlemen. Please stay in your seats. Thank you. Wait. Karim. Karim. <laughs> Come and talk to me. Congratulations, Kareem Al Hamami, world champion. How does that sound? <laughs> can't believe it. Really, it's amazing. I just can't believe I became the world champion for my first time. I was playing this tournament, so it's really fantastic. And at and at two nil, you must have been thinking, "My God, what's going on?" And then he just came at you and came at you and came at you. How does that feel when? you know that there's that much pressure. Since I was injured, I couldn't get in the game again. I was down like 10-6 this game, put a nick, so I got... Yeah, it's four, four, five game balls that you saved. It just took the one match ball for you to put that away. Um, an absolutely amazing match, I think. Can we have another round of applause for both these players? I think uh, an epic match for sure. And, of course, you guys play all the time, but I'm guessing you're going to put that up as the best win of your career so far? Yeah, it's my first time to win Ferris. He's a great player. He's a very great player. He's number one in Egypt, so it's really good to beat him. And 
We're going to get on with the medal salary in a moment, but just very quickly, talk to me about the Olympics. We all know the big decisions coming up. What would us being in the Olympics mean to someone like yourself? Uh, there are many conflicts with very games. Uh, squash should be in the Olympics. All the people are waiting for squash to be in the Olympics, so we really need to... to I mean, uh, we really need to do good uh, commercial videos to squash to get in the Olympics. Well, congratulations, Kareem al Ahami, world champion. We'll see you in the middle of in a moment. Let's hear it for him. Well, ladies and gentlemen, please stay in your seats. We're going to move on very quickly with the medals ceremony. We're just going to set up the court and get started. I think you'll agree that it's been an absolutely inspiring week of squash where we've seen the future of our game, the future stars of our game entertain us in the most amazing style. And some of those players, ladies and gentlemen, could you not please not leave the court area? We have a presentation. Please show your respect to the winners. We will be starting the ceremony in a couple of minutes' time. Thank you.